Hey guys, I'm Tara. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to film a little bit of a different type of video for you guys. I'm going to do a vlog type style video where I'm going to show you guys how I spend a day at home when I'm trying to tap into the spring season. So the things I'm going to share with you today are pretty similar things that I do for spring and summer on a day when I'm really just trying to connect with the season. I really love doing seasonal activities and really connecting with each and every season and I find that's a really great way to keep yourself in the present moment. So that's why I'm sharing this with you guys today in hopes of giving you guys some ideas on how you could tap into the spring and summer season. So let's get to our first activity. A really great way to connect with the spring season and the earth is to meditate outside. So I love to do this when it's starting to get warmer out. I find it's a really beautiful way to start the day. And I don't do this every day because I also really do prefer to meditate at night, um, but some mornings I will start this way. And today is a Friday, so on Fridays I always meditate in the morning because it never happens on Friday night. So yeah, we're getting our meditation done early today. meditation done it's actually the perfect temperature out right now it's really overcast it actually might rain which would help us tap into the spring season a little bit more um, but yeah that felt really great sometimes I do like when it is sunny and I have the Sun on my face but then I do get hot sometimes so this actually was really nice so for the rest of today to continue tapping into the springtime vibes I'm gonna go outside and do a little bit of planting I have a few things left to plant and also I'm going to fill my hummingbird feeder and get that set up because I haven't done that yet. So before we go outside, we're going to fill the hummingbird feeder and we'll make some iced tea because that's my favorite drink to have after I've been outside in the garden. So here we're boiling some water to make our hummingbird food and to make our iced tea, so two for one. So for our hummingbird food, we need one cup of boiling water and then a quarter cup of plain white sugar. Mix that together until the sugar dissolves. And then you let that sit and it will make a nectar. So basically for, if you're making your own hummingbird food, it's going to be four parts water to one part white sugar. And apparently you need to use plain white sugar. I think you can't even use organic sugar from what I've read. So I just got this plain bag of plain white sugar on Amazon, which I don't even use for myself personally. I just use it for hummingbird food. And then basically, so once you mix that in, it dissolves and it makes like a nectar. You just have to let it sit and cool and it'll make that nectar and then we'll put it in the hummingbird feeder. So I got this new hummingbird feeder for this year because I had a different one last year, but it got so many yellow jackets in it. So I wanted to try this one out because it's supposed to be better, like the bees can't get in it. So we'll try it out. But just so you guys know, if you do want to get a hummingbird feeder, you really do have to wash it and refill it with food pretty frequently, like especially in the hot weather because the food in it will start to mold and it gets pretty disgusting. So you really have to be on top of it. So it's not like you could just fill it once and leave it out there. You really do have to be consistently cleaning it and changing the food, so just so you guys know that. Okay, while that sits, we'll move on to our iced tea. So I have this adorable little tea box that I keep all my teas in. I actually got it on Amazon, so I can put a link to it in the description down below if you guys are interested. It's super cute and a super way to keep your teas organized. So we're gonna use I have so many bags of Irish breakfast tea because that's what I drink in the winter. That's like my favorite black tea. And I made it with ice for iced tea the other day and it tasted fine. So I'm just gonna use those tea bags to make our iced tea. So I don't put any added sugar in my iced tea. I just sweeten it up a little bit with some orange and some lemon. Okay, so next we're gonna go outside and I'm going to do some planting. I have some corn plants that I wanna plant and then I have these green onions that I cooked with the other night. So I wasn't ready to like go out to the garden and plant them. So I threw them in some water that was like three days ago. 
and I figured I would plant them today and they're literally already sprouting. I don't know if you could see. Like this is where they started on the white and the green is already sprouting up. So if you don't garden, you might be able to do this trick and like kind of reuse and grow your own green onions. I've never done it in water. I normally put them in the ground outside, but yeah, they literally three days, they're already sprouting. So we're heading to my little sanctuary for the spring and the summer and the fall season, my garden. So it's still a little bit of a mess on the borders. I'm hoping that this weekend, I'm trying to convince Scott to come out here and make like a mulch border for me on the garden. So hopefully we'll, if I'm telling him that I told you guys in this video, hopefully he'll be more likely to come out and do it. So I'm gonna put the green onions in this little space I have here. I kind of just wing it a lot when it comes to gardening. I mean, this is my third year having my own garden. Um, so I definitely have learned a lot, but I still sometimes just like wing it and see what works. So I'm back inside and now I get to sit and have my iced tea. If you're someone who normally likes sweetened tea and you don't really like unsweetened iced tea, I highly suggest trying the lemon and the orange because it really gives it a nice flavor and it like gives it that like hint of sweetness. It's so good. My vegetable garden's pretty much done. I have like maybe one other spot where I could put maybe like one more plant, but otherwise it's pretty much full. The only thing left to do is to make that mulch border around it. So I think it'll look much nicer that way and then the grass won't get so overgrown. So I'm hoping Scott will do that this weekend. I'm trying to get him to do it tomorrow. Otherwise it's pretty much done. I just have some pot still that I could fill and we I have a small garden space like right to the side of the house that gets a lot of shade that Pretty much I pulled like everything in, so I might add some stuff in there. But otherwise, it's pretty much ready for the season. So gardening and planting is how I really like to connect with the spring season. Um, it's a really good way for me to feel grounded. And I feel like it's such a good way to really just connect with the earth. And it kind of helps you tap into the spring season, which is all about, you know, new life and new beginnings. And even if you're not really into gardening or you don't have a lot of space, you can even just have a few um, plants in pots. You could do some herbs or vegetables or even flowers and it's just a really good way to connect with the season. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you liked this style of video. It was definitely new for me to film in this way. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys liked it. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button right below me and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.